What's going on everybody? So another video, another day, and we have this here hunk. So it's got the turbo uh, mounted. It's just sort of being mocked up at the moment. There's a lot of things that have to happen between now and putting the engine back in the car. So I'm just kind of going over it one thing at a time here. Um, having some troubles in certain areas and other things are going smooth. Um, uh, just too many to list at this point. So uh, I'm just going to kind of take you along for the ride, I guess. But uh, basically, we have the, the Turbo Smart Shorty uh, blow off valve. I didn't want to research because I want cool noises for no reason. Um, I kind of have the turbo clocked close to where it's going to be. Uh, I still have to remount the wastegate actuator bracket. Um, let's see. We got. Uh, I received the Racing Beat um, sensor adapter tower deal, but it came damaged, so I had to send it back. Um, waiting on that to come. I've got a bunch of sensors that showed up. I have a giant mess of wires going on up here as I'm hacking into the harness and putting new pieces in, putting the sensors on, uh, programming where I want them to be in the software, and just kind of one step at a time here. Um, yeah, so still waiting on some parts to get here that I never received for certain items, and uh, I won't call anybody out right yet, but uh, it's been a uh, long time coming. So a lot of, lot of work to go, and I'll uh, try to update you guys here shortly, but this will probably be uh, uh, it for a little while. So see you in a bit. Okay, so we got the blow-off valve installed, got rid of the recirc valve. Um, got the wastegate installed got everything torqued down uh, I am still waiting on my uh, drain for the oil system and some other parts uh, I got the preload on the turbo and everything looks hunky-dory there so the only thing really left to do would be to finish plumbing it and obviously uh, full boost send so I think it uh, looks pretty slick. I put these on this side because I think I'm going to try and tuck these somewhere. I don't know. I don't know how that's going to go yet. So I don't know if at first I'm even going to use the second port. Um, being a dual port actuator, um, this one's primarily to help keep the wastegate closed. I don't think I'm going to be running enough boost to ever need it, but I have it. So in the future, probably not this block, um, I'll have the parts. So that'll be super handy. Um, I will be using uh, this actuator um, a little bit, probably for some low boost stuff and then, you know, a little bit of boost control up top. But other than that, I am pretty well satisfied with how this is turning out. I was kind of bummed because it looks like I'm going to probably have to actually drill into my manifold to be able to mount my exhaust gas uh, back pressure line, which I have failed to show in the videos. Uh, I have had forgotten about it and it was in a different box. So unfortunately that is not going to be uh, probably an immediate use item also but that's perfectly fine I have a lot of tuning to go through so anyways moving along well I had a Modelo getting a little squirrely probably a little premature on this whole thing but uh, it might come back to bite me I think I'm just gonna slap that on there just to see what it looks like Yep. Unfortunately, I do have to reclock it. Um, the upper coolant uh, exit hole here is just too close to the manifold, but uh, I am kind of concerned that the 
turbo blanket that I have is going to have to be put on before I bolt the exhaust manifold. I don't see how that's going to go on there otherwise. It is... I, I, I can't get... literally can't fit my pinky in there. So... Kind of curious why it needs to be so close to the manifold. I mean, I thought we had a little more room than that, but I guess that's just how it is. It is right there. Yikes, maybe I should have gone with the better heat shielding. Hmm. Well, I suppose that's why there's a little bit extra oil line too. So I need to uh, rotate a bit more. So right now it's sitting pretty much straight up and down and they give you 20 degrees to play with is what they say. So I don't want to push that too much but I don't think it's going to hurt anything to uh, cant it out just slightly and uh, get a little bit more room there. But yeah. I think that does look pretty darn sharp. I'm not using the oil injection system. Um, I don't really have a good reason. I'm just not. Uh, I tried to get this out earlier and it didn't go very well. I suppose the next time this block is torn down, if this cast, if this uh, iron is still usable, I will uh, uh, drill it. I have uh, NPT taps and everything, but I just I couldn't get it out of there, and I didn't want to break it because I don't really want metal in my engine right now. I guess I am on a stand. I could do it upside down. I guess that's a possibility. Huh. I didn't really think about that. Well, if I decide to do something with this, I'll, uh, I'll update but I have an NPT plug that's blue. That would look pretty sharp in there. Um, but right now, that's just gonna be the way it is. Oh man. She's a ripper. Okay. Let's talk about some stuff. So, online retailers, um, specifically in the rotary engine community, it, it, it seems like with us rotary engine people, there is so much just malarkey out there in the world, out in the wild that it makes it almost impossible to weed through the baloney, right? So, for instance, say you save up for a while and you decide, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to go ahead and build my high school car back to something worthy of showing off, right? So you gather up a bunch of cash and you find somebody that's active in the forums and and seems to have at least a bit of knowledge of what they're talking about and you go ahead and order a kit and in my mind a kit is something that you perhaps receive a set of instructions for or maybe there's a, a video somewhere you can go watch and it has all of the parts that are necessary to hook it up to your thing or to assemble or to whatever you need to do right I like to think of myself as a mildly intelligent person that is relatively decent at figuring most things out in life. I've done okay thus far. However, um, what is going on with this install kit is absolutely appalling. So there's there's no sort of like instructions or a, any sort of clue what they want you to do with these things for the S4 apparently. 
if you have an FD, which is what I received parts for, apparently, um, I, I, I guess that's, you know, this is acceptable. But if you have an FC, you're supposed to come up with something different here. So I spent a bunch of money on a custom kit, and then you end up with just, just all kinds of craziness. Like, I don't know, let's take this for instance. This wildly, it's not even close, it's facing the wrong way. Like I'm gonna have to custom bend that myself, right? But is that the worst of it? It's like, what is this? Did they cut it with a plasma cutter? And then TIG weld it? Is it an old pipe they had lying around and they decided that'll be perfect for our kit? Let's throw a flare on one end and a and a nut on the other? Like, what what kind of crap are we doing here? So, if you follow the instructions that they have for the FD, it comes with two of these little swivel guys, right? And they're this one plums back around to the front, which it's supposed to, I guess, which is great. You got the oil line, cool. That one fits, sort of. Um, but there's no indication of like, am I doing it right? There's no, I, I don't know what he's going for here. What, what's, what's the goal? So just ranting and raving a little bit. Um, there are companies out there that will happily take your money, uh, make you wait almost a full year for the product without ever having any intentions of like making themselves available to you as far as like contact or email or responses and uh, once they've got your money that's all they need then they're on to the next guy so while this does say cool words on the front and all that stuff I would happily happily return all of the time that I wasted all of the headache that I've gone through trying to contact this person and go with a lesser name turbo. In fact, I should have just stuck with the one that I had on there and ran the eBay turbo till it died. Because the amount of headache that this has given me, just trying to maintain communication open with the person I purchased it from for thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars is just unacceptable and so what do I do I go online and I search their company name and I search complaints and what do I find just dozens of stories horror stories of the exact same scenario with other people so do your research guys on who you're gonna do business with um, figure out who's who's got your best interests at heart and who's just out for a buck because some of these guys they, they clearly have no clue how to run a business. Maybe they're great at everything else they do, but running a business is not one of them that they should be doing. So that's my little rant for now. Okay, so I'm in Eugene here, and I'm going to be working on the wiring harness. So I've just uh, changed the wire color, um, just more of a flag than anything. Um, I'm also going to be doing the uh, oil temperature, so I should probably put one on there. Uh, why not? I'm just changing the wire color to yellow, just to just to kind of stand out from the other stuff. Because I have the pinouts on there, and then I'm going through the harness. I just have it sort of hanging here, and I'm going to change. Um, a couple of pins around like the the fuel pump uh, control I was just running for testing purposes only I was running the uh, the bypass to ground um, just the short um, mechanics loop there so um, I'm gonna wire that in properly but the the way I'm gonna try and wire it I'm gonna leave this um, working still so that I can actually still use that if I need to do troubleshooting in the future uh, for whatever reason I feel like that should be a good idea um, probably not necessary but I'm going to remove some of the things from this harness there's a lot of junk in here that isn't necessary uh, I'm gonna strip back pretty much all of these and these will probably go 
sort of where the old mass airflow sensor was and go to the passenger side uh, fender area and that way I can manage it a little bit better so yeah I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and start tackling this here this this harness is kind of sorry well I mean it's not that bad but it's it I mean <laughs> bad is relative right so it it definitely needs some work but um, it should be replaced however I'm not gonna be doing that I'm just gonna use it as is and uh, repurpose and then I'm gonna cut back some of the wires and probably throw some different connectors on there because some of these uh, just they're just corroded just brittle all that stuff so there'll be a lot of uh, repairs and stuff happening like my bypass air control is just crunchy I'm gonna actually pot this one um, at the uh, bypass air control itself so this won't even exist anymore and these will get cut way back into here and then I'll uh, splice in some new ones I have some uh, solderable connectors that I'm going to use I got like a package of these things so these should at least keep the the moisture out and everything and allow me to do um, maybe some ground splicing and and different things like that for for signal and whatever anyways uh, we're going to continue on so I'll bring you guys back when I get a little bit further along all right so we're a little further along now looks kind of like a giant mess but so we have this plug here which is the series 4 um, resistor pack plug I have it down here and this guy basically what it does is sends all of the um, signals through the resistor pack and then back out so they're all tied to this yellow or this black and yellow here so what I'm going to do is because you can see the uh, black and yellow goes up that's uh, I guess that'd be the positive and these all these brown and white brown and red brown and um, yellow and just brown is that what that is brown and blue I can't tell Anyways, all of these are just going to get tied together. So I'm going to basically, somewhere up here, um, put these into a heat shrink connector and get rid of this entire cable. So there's a couple of things that are going to be gotten rid of, and that's just one of them. And then uh, I've been kind of going through and labeling some of these things that I'm uh, going to save for later and possibly just tuck underneath the dash for now. But uh, yeah, so that's where we're at long ways to go well it's way too early in the morning it's a little past 1 a.m. and here's kinda where I'm at I've gotten most of the spare signal wires stripped out and just kinda place holded place holded place held back here and I'm just uh, using these little this little luma velcro strips to um, kind of mock it up in place just to hold it in place so I don't have to tape and retape and untape and, and all that stuff so I have kind of a rough layout of where I'm gonna have things like uh, bypass air control and uh, TPS and air temp sensors things like that and then I have some new sensors that I'll have to run some wires from the um, actual connector all the way up uh, I'll get to those probably last but for now I think it's about bedtime but well, she's coming along it'll look a lot better when it's all kinda straightened out and wrapped but definitely not as nice as doing a full out custom harness that stuff gets expensive quick well I am uh, thinking I'm gonna try and mount this flex fuel sensor somewhere there I, I got a couple of free um, bolt holes in the rotor housing 
So I think what I will do is probably do, I don't know, some sort of bracket of some kind and uh, try to mount that up. It does have these little like notches on the outside that you're supposed to be able to clip this in, but I, I just don't know how I'm going to do that yet. But not really too concerned at the moment. Um, so I have uh, oil pressure I'm going to be doing either on this one or this one. I'm going to send or I'm going to do an ORB uh, to um, 6AN with a 1 8 NPT um, hole in it so I can do one of these um, pressure sensors and I'm going to do fuel pressure on the rail uh, so I can send that back to the computer as well so I'll have fuel pressure, fuel temperature, oil pressure, oil temperature um, all registered which will be nice and then I'll have flex as well um, so I kind of made this little chart here just kind of rough uh, what I'm doing as far as how many wires I was going to need so on connector one uh, there are let's see here on connector one there are two things that I'm outputting which is the turbine speed and the flex sensor and on connector four I was going to do oil pressure and fuel pressure so because connector one is in the chassis of the car and it kind of crosses over the front um, I don't want to leave that like hard mounted in here and I have to like unpin everything every time I want to take something out. Uh, so I'm going to run VSS and flex fuel to one of these little connectors and then those will pigtail into connector one where those pins go. So I can just disconnect this and then the harness will pull out if I need to for a future. So I have some wires that I've made up here and we're going to run these all the way through the whole harness back to the connector blocks and get them wired in so uh, the fuel pressure or excuse me VSS and flex will be on uh, that little connector well we're basically done with the construction of the harness as far as the wiring goes um, it should be pretty much done I got everything I could think of that I would want um, figured out I'm going to do the flex fuel sensor down here because that seems like a really crappy spot for it so that's where it's going to go. Yeah that's what we came up with. Um, these two, I feel like one of these is going to go to the ASV and so I just sort of left these here and if neither of them does, this one's all fried from sitting down by the exhaust um, if neither of them do then I will make it work with the ASV I'm, I'm, I'm still debating on what positive things this is going to do for me but we shall see a little bit difficult to get this turbo speed sensor cable in here because it's got the largest um, connector out of all of them and uh, the manifold, I don't even have the gasket in here, it's just kind of chilling there for now. I still have to go through the bypass air control valve and and uh, I'm gonna pot this and that'll be a lot better connection because this this wire is pretty pretty chewed up. Um, and then all this craziness going on right here um, I didn't have any red wire, I only had yellow, white, and black so I didn't want to um, finish that one until I got the correct color wire. So I'm doing red for my 12 volt, um, white for my 5 volt, black for ground, and yellow for signal. But And also I'm still actually waiting for my other pressure transducer. I'm going to do um, fuel pressure off of an AN line. It'll sit somewhere like that, down here, probably. 
should be pretty well hidden actually. Really fun to get to if I ever need to. But I think it turned out pretty good. Um, now I'm just going to go ahead and pin um, a couple of these um, connectors that I have laying around and uh, are these wires that I have laying here and just kind of go through some testing and make sure that there's no craziness happening and just see if everything works and then after that I'll go ahead and start working on whatever kind of jacket I can come up with for this so I'm probably gonna do some Kapton tape and then um, I have a pretty decent um, like heat shielding wrap that goes over here so this this stuff will be rather well protected it seemed to do fine with it before the way I had it so I liked it uh, quite a bit actually and then after all this is done uh, I can start concentrating on the fuel system and getting all of this plumbed so that it's ready to go but I'm still waiting for my um, drain port uh, this is from the old turbo so it's just sitting there but and then finally plumbing okay this is legitimately the first time I'm going to add power to this thing I do have the 25 amp fuse on the line so if anything catastrophic happens I don't think anything's gonna happen but um, yeah here we go so positive to the black and white wire they're basically all tied together anyways I really like the feel of that connector just feel that tight probably because it's the wrong one and then you know what? I'm going to check the burn really quickly. I think they're all pretty much tied together as well. Yeah. Okay. So I guess. The yeah, electronic is already on. It's plugged into the PC. Woo! Still blinking. Something moved. That might have been the bypass air control. It is. Okay. So, I have power and I don't see smoke, so that's good. So I'm going to go ahead and put on my super professional clamp here to hold this on. And I will turn on the meter to monitor. Okay. So. ECU hardware settings, excuse me, diagnostics, ECU data. Okay, so it looks like we have data, so that's a good thing. Let's go to inputs, temperature sensors, coolant sensors working, air temperature. Interesting. Oil temp sensor. Fuel temp sensor, that one's not uh, hooked up yet. User temp one, I don't know what, that, oh that might be the, uh, actually you know what, I don't think anything's plugged into that one. External one.
external input one is 2e. Something's on it. Third one over. Is the green and the blue stripe? Hmm. No idea what I got going on there. Okay. But the default, huh? Oh, okay. Let's put these two not or times two and three. Oops. Yeah, FD. Upgraded. Okay. Then we have liquid pressure sensors. So we have our oil pressure sensor um, hooked up. It's returning 0.49. I assume that's good, but I don't really have a good way to test that. Actually, if I go to absolute, um, if I go to 150 psi a, it should say negative 14, and it does not. So, so that should be working too. Let me unplug the connector to it. And no change. Okay. You know what? That might be the one down below. Oh, oil pressure. No, I only have one. Point four nine. Zero count. Hmm. Oil pressure sensor. Uh, default location would be this sensor or this connector here. Oh yeah, something's happened. Okay, so that's the right one. just because I have no pressure. But when I get my next uh, pressure trans transducer, I'll go ahead and uh, compare it to this one and see if it gives me the same results and I can double check my wiring. Um, I'm pretty sure it's correct. So we'll just move along here. What do we got? Fuel pressure sensor. Uh, I don't have that one installed yet. Actually, temperature sensor, so engine, air, oil, or yeah, well. I want to know what this 32 degrees coming back is. I want to put that one to none for right now as well. And then, so I do have that, okay. And then the fuel. That was working, right? I guess because there's no fuel. Ah, oops. Okay, so 
so front flex sensor 72 degrees. Perfect. So that works. Uh, let's give me an option for. No option for turbine speed. So we'll go to the gauge page and we'll go to. I've already kind of set some of this up, but oh, apparently I haven't. Okay. Oh, yeah, it's right there. So if I spin this guy, anything at all, I'm not even 0.00 of a thousand, or it's not working. Unfortunately, so inputs, other sources, ESS, and I have it plugged into ESS support wiring guide. ESS is one, two, three, four, five over. One, two, three, four, five over. So it's just not doing the thing. And that was the problem I had with it before, so unfortunately, I don't know what I'm going to do about that. Um, let's see. So basically, the only thing I haven't done in addition to all these things is the uh, pyro stuff. EGTs. So we should be able to click the injectors. So, okay, I heard something. Oh, well, the first one didn't give me a thingy. Good pulse, but I don't hear anything. So if I go to output five, I shouldn't do anything. No, it's the same. It's no easier. Hmm. All right. Well, it looks like it's working. I'm going to play with this for a little while, and uh, yeah, it looks like I just need to finish the harness and get it all buttoned up and put away and everything, but I think we're uh, making some good progress. I also still have to run the uh, the fuel um, activation deal. I have a relay for the fuel pump installed in the car um, for all this, so I can use a pretty small signal wire for that, but uh, I'd still like it to work and I'd still like to be able to use the bypass mechanics uh, activator. So, Anyways, uh, I think that's it for now. Um, hope you guys like the progress. I think it looks pretty good. Maybe I'll give you one more look here shortly. Okay, you know those moments where you go to walk away from something confused and you're thinking about it and then you realize I forgot something. So, because I bypassed the uh, resistor for the old low impedance injectors, I had forgotten that you still have to power the things. So because the ECU provides ground to the injectors, I was never injecting a 12 volt signal to the injectors at all. So I was providing ground with no return path. So I've gone ahead and hooked up um, my injector uh, positive cable to the circuit here, and I'll plug the fuse back in. So now, assuming everything's good, yeah, there we're getting normal current draw. Okay, there's one, there's two. 
three. There's four. And everything looks normal. Pretty similar current paths on the trace, so I'm pretty happy with that. So, yeah, if you're doing this on the bench, there's going to be a lot of things that just don't jump out at you right away. So, uh, yeah, they do work now. They do make clicky clacky noises. So, remember to inject power to your injectors. Okay. Okay, and for the end of the video. Oh shoot. Can't believe we left that off. Oh, thank goodness. Much better. This is a fun project. I'm not going to lie. This is pretty cool. And I think that looks quite stellar. And there's going to be a bunch of piping that will cover up most of this anyways. Quite happy.